Do you enjoy reading? Do you enjoy reading short stories? Do you enjoy reading scary stories? Then I have just the thing for you, Stories of the Bizarre and Terrifying Omnibus One, a complete collection of all of my short stories so far in one handy little collection. It also comes with a handful of neat little extras, including a glossary of all the creatures and forces I've created over the years, author's notes providing insight into my creative process and inspirations, and even two all new short stories that function as proof of concepts for two ideas I've had for much bigger works. If you're at all interested, feel free to check out the links in the description. It's available in both ebook, paperback, and for the first time ever, hardcover. Silent Hill 2 is one of many classics that for one reason or another, I never had the chance to try out. I'd always been curious about ever since I saw an ad on TV as a kid and asked my brother what Silent Hill was. It was about high school that my curiosity was at its peak, as I finally learned how to use the internet and learn more about it, but had no way of playing it. <laughs> That curiosity, though, has never gone away. I still wanted to play it for the longest time. Not too long ago, I even got my hands on the PC version. I tried everything in my power to get it running on my PC, but no matter what fix I tried, it would just not run. It would always crash around the first enemy encounter. So for the longest time, my only real experience with Silent Hill was a less than stellar time with the third game around when I was 12 or 13, Homecoming, Downpour, and the HD collection. That was until recently, when I made a discovery out of the blue while scrolling through Twitter. Something amazing that got my heart racing and my saliva glands secreting. A remaster mod whose main selling point was compatibility on modern systems for Silent Hill 2's PC version. Immediately I downloaded it and after holding my breath, I found to my delight that it worked. I was beyond excited to finally be able to try it. Not only the peak of the Silent Hill series, but one of the greatest games to have ever been made. And then, I didn't think it was that great. At first. Oh my god. Who could have... Now the first thing I need to say is that the Enhanced Edition mod does what it says on the tin. Makes the game playable on modern PCs. That alone is fantastic, but the developers went the extra mile and made it applicable to other versions of the game as well. If you prefer to emulate the console versions over running the PC version, well, it can be applied to those as well. I'm sure you're wondering why. Why would I want to apply a compatibility mod to the emulations? The answer is because the mod just doesn't do what it says on the tin. It also improves the visual fidelity and adds some quality of life features that make the game more accessible. Or to put it more simply, it does what the HD collection should have done, and a lot more. The game gets upscaled to modern HD with widescreen support, while also preserving and enhancing the visual effects. Lighting in particular has been made softer and more real, with new believable lighting effects to make everything look more organic, as well as touch-ups to the textures and in-game icons. Everything is presented in thick, foggy glory, ready to envelop you in despair and misery, while the quality of life features adds a few new mechanics, most notably the ability to save at any time, so when you're running low on health, an icon will pop up in game to let you know. There's also other additions like improvements to keyboard and mouse controls and controller support, and if I were to go through all of them, this video would probably be twice as long. However, I won't deny that some of these new additions may be antithetical to the spirit of Silent Hill and off-putting to original fans. But not to worry, the mod also comes with a settings app you can access in the file directory. With it you can adjust settings and not only customize the HD paint job to your liking, like simulate CRT monitors for instance, but you can also deactivate certain features as well, like the health indicator or certain fixes you just don't like. Honestly, the amount of passion and care that's gone into the mod alone is equal to what went into the game itself. Speaking of which, let's actually get into that. Yeah. 
I loved the story more than I expected to, largely due to how well realized it was. I knew it had been praised for its use of symbolism and its characters, but I did not know how good it really was until I at last got beyond where the PC version would always crash for me. Themes like trauma, abuse, sexuality, and one's own psychology are all touched on with maturity and subtlety in a variety of different ways. From the symbolism of monsters like the abstract daddy, to the deformities of the lying figures, to the mannerisms of the few other characters within Silent Hill, including the protagonist James Sunderland. The characters in particular struck out to me. With the awkward and off nature of their dialogue and the slight stillness to their voices, these made the interactions with them skin crawling in their own right. And once things became more overt, outright terrifying. If I did have to complain about something in the story though, I would have to say that I found the first third of it to be rather dull. You should rest. Mm. <clears throat> so comfy. I'm gonna go look for her. For Laura. I'll be back as soon as I can. This was because outside of the first enemy encounter, there just wasn't a whole lot to draw me in, and once I reached the Woodside Apartments, it really just slowed to a crawl for me. Not a whole lot of note happened outside of Pyramid Head making his first appearance, and one or two puzzles that can be rather confusing. But at least it didn't slow down to the point of being a boring slog, and there were a few things in there that did draw me back in, and when you're up to the Brookhaven Hospital, that's when the narrative starts to fire on all cylinders and really gets you hooked. Even without the Enhanced Edition mod, the game's visuals have held up remarkably well. The brighter colors on the character models make them stand out against the bleak grays and muted greens of the town. They also have a fair bit of detail on them, so when they're featured in the in-game cutscenes, they can display decent expressional range and come off as believable, which can't be said about the pre-rendered ones, which have aged as well as Donkey Kong the Animated Series. In fact, while detail on the character models still looks good, the same can't be said about the environment. This isn't an issue with the art style but rather the technical side of things. It hasn't aged well and when upscaled to HD just looks terrible. Smudgy walls and cubic leaves and grass don't make for the creation of an unsettling and uncanny world, they just look awkward. Killing a person ain't no big deal. The game also controls rather well. I usually play similar titles like Tormented Souls with a controller, but here, I decided to see how it handled with the keyboard and mouse. I don't know if it was because of the mod or not, but I did find it to be a natural way to control James, using the WASD standard to walk, with the option of the mouse to turn around, with Q and E to strafe. This also made me appreciate the game's fixed camera perspective a whole lot more. Not just because the two worked well together, but because it made me realize something about the camera, with how it constantly maintains maintains a good distance from James, as well as constantly trails and swings about to keep up with him, it gives the game a strong dreamlike quality. Like we're not just playing a game, but also like we're watching someone who's traveling through a personal hell, or forced to make their way through a lucid nightmare with no guarantee of waking up. <laughs> However, a good chunk of the game's tension does end up being diluted in the second half of the game. I experienced this on normal difficulty. By rationing my ammo and trying to be careful around combat, as a result, I ended up drowning in bullets and health drinks once I got out of Brookhaven Hospital. As a consequence, I was free to go gung-ho on as many enemies as I wanted without concern for my resources, so long as I maintained a distance from them. Granted though, another flaw in the game does kinda cancel this out to a point. I noticed that there was a lot of inconsistency when it came to how much damage an enemy could take before they died, regardless of what weapon it was. So a nurse could take five handgun bullets to take down, but then you might encounter another one that just keeps getting up, and you have to spend two clips to keep it down. So this does balance it out in the end, with running away being the most reliable option, and the game's fear factor isn't hurt too badly by either, but that doesn't mean it's not annoying that you have no way of knowing just how much an enemy can take before they'll just stay down. The music though was never annoying. Akira Yamaoka's soundtrack was an absolute delight. I have listened to some of his other work in the past, but this was the first time I've really heard his work for Silent Hill 2 in particular, and hot oh, damn! 
His work is possibly the best part of the whole game. His music does a tremendous job of setting its bleak tone as well as adding character to the smaller moments. From calm sounds to tense chaotic rhythms, if his music wasn't here then the game wouldn't be as memorable as it is. Here, these are some of my favourite tracks as well as others and hear what I mean for yourself. In contrast, I wasn't too fond of the puzzles. Don't get me wrong, they do the job of giving the player a mental challenge, are doable, and they even have their own separate difficulty setting for accessibility's sake. The problem I have is that a lot of them are just rather obtuse, so the clues can be hard to understand or follow old school adventure game moon logic. The clue for the coin puzzle, for instance, just annoyed me. I understood it, but it took me longer than I would like to admit to figure out the exact correct placement for the coins. It also didn't help that resetting them was a very cumbersome process. But a much better example is the trap door puzzle, where you need to make a handle to open up a trap door in order to progress. I only knew how to solve it because of a video by Yahtzee, where he mentioned the puzzle exactly and the three items required as an example of moon logic puzzle design. If I hadn't known that, I could have easily seen myself struggling to figure out what the hell I was supposed to do before either getting fed up and quitting or doing what you'd be forgiven for doing more than once. Look up a walk through so you can get back to the compelling story. The only other thing I have to say is that, if it wasn't obvious already, this is a scary game. Yes, it does take a while for the really good scares to show up, but even then, the dark and enveloping atmosphere does a tremendous job of getting under your skin, so you're always on edge waiting for one to come. However, I did notice something about the mod while playing, and that was that the lighting seemed brighter in the scenes I could remember from my brief time with the HD collection. I don't know if this was because of a setting I didn't change in the game or in the mod, but regardless, this did make certain details easy to see that may have meant to be more obscured or that I just wasn't meant to see. Like when Pyramid Head first shows up. I actually saw him behind some bars in a hallway in the Woodside Apartments before the encounter in, well, one of the apartments. I do not remember seeing him there with the HD collection. This doesn't hurt the game's fear factor, but it is something I can see a purist raising an eyebrow over if this is the case. It's hot as hell in here. You see it too. For me, it's always like this. In the end, I am beyond glad I found the Enhanced Edition mod and was finally able to play this game. I'll admit, there were times where I did feel somewhat bored, and if I had played this as a kid, I would have definitely straight up hated it. But that boredom never lasted long as I enjoyed what is now one of my new favourite stories. If you're a long-time fan, or like me and always wanted to see what this game was like, then the Enhanced Edition mod is an absolute must-play. Now if you'll excuse me, I need to channel my now steroid enhanced anticipation for the remake into another project.
Hey, thanks for checking out this video. I really do appreciate it. If you really like it, then please hit the like and the subscribe buttons. That would really help me out in the algorithm. If you're interested in the Silent Hill 2 Enhanced Edition mod, I posted a link in the video's description. Anyway, for the next game I plan to take a look at, it's going to be Warhammer 40k Bolt Gun, followed up with the System Shock Remake, and then Aliens Dark Descent. Also, some great news. I'm going to be finishing my computer's upgrade soon. That's going to be slip and sweet. And I can't wait to see how some very specific games handle with the new hardware. Anyway, I got all that and more coming up, so please stick around.